Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, we're going to talk about the lag and no lag forehands of Diego Schwartzman and Roger Federer. Now, on the left, this video is courtesy of Liam Appalato over at Court Level Tennis. Thank you so much, Liam. And on the right, this is courtesy of 12KGP Tennis. Both channels on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to their awesome channels. I put their links in the description below. All right. Diego Schwartzman on the left, Roger Federer on the right. So right off the bat, we want to know that they're using different grips on these forehands. So semi-western on the left here with Diego and an eastern on the right. So what you need to know with that is when it comes to the contact point, their palms are facing in different places. So when Federer is hitting this forehand, his palm is facing directly toward his opponent. And with Diego, when he's hitting the forehand, his palm is facing up at 45 degrees. When the racket is the same between the, the shots, then the palm is the difference. And so Diego's palm is facing up at 45 degrees because it's a semi-western, and Federer's palm is facing forward. Typically, the higher the contact for amateurs, the more likely they will like to use a semi-western or even possibly full western. And the lower the contact, the more likely they will enjoy using an eastern grip. So if you're someone who plays on clay a lot, it might actually be in your best interest to use a semi-western grip because you're going to have to be dealing with higher balls on that surface. So let's look at their turn. And you can see right away that Diego has a higher turn. If we just look at the tip of his racket and then we look at Fetters, the tip of Fetters racket is very much at the top of his head when he takes the racket back. It goes a little higher than that line, but that's basically the height of his turn where you can see Diego goes much, much higher. Now, this is really because of the difference they're going to be using in their swing. And let's get right to it. This is the no lag forehand and this is the lag forehand and don't get confused i'm not using red because it's wrong and green because this is right it's really going to be personal preference for what you feel helps you hit your best forehands but you'll notice as they begin dropping their racket they're really using two different techniques if we look at fetter look how his arm is bent and then as he drops his racket, his arm straightens. So it's like he's pushing his palm down toward the ground. And as he does this, the tip of his racket is pointing off to the right. When you look at Diego Schwartzman on the left, you'll see that he's not straightening his arm down, but actually reaching back to the camera. And we can see that the tip of his racket is actually pointing right at us, right? So he is not dropping the racket like we see with Federer with the tip of the racket pointing off to the right, which would mean the tip of the racket's pointing here if it correlates with, with uh, Diego. It's not doing that. When he's dropping his racket, he's dropping his racket much more like um, uh, uh, Del Potro, Serena Williams. Uh, you look at even like 20 years ago, Leighton Hewitt. This is the type of forehand that was used uh, predominantly years ago. And it makes for an absolutely fantastic forehand, especially for amateurs, to copy because of the simplicity. If we look at Federer here, when he drops the racket, and really it's a straightening of the arm from bent arm to straight arm when he does this the racket is not in position to hit the ball at this point so he is going to have to let the racket head go back because his hand goes forward look at Federer as his body rotates and his hand comes forward all of a sudden the two of them look very similar now they're in very similar positions but here they're very different and they get similar because they both pull their hand forward. But Fetters, because the tip of his racket was pointing off to the right, he gets a really big lag. If we actually compare these positions right here, I want you to notice that Diego's racket is going to go this direction, but Federer's racket is about to go this direction. It's very cool. Watch this. Diego's racket goes to the right. So look at this. But Federer's racket, it actually goes this way. There's more lag and more stretching of the forearm, which is really going to activate that forearm in hand as the racket goes through contact to produce a tremendous amount of racket speed. Not all racket speed is controllable, though. And if you try this, you might find that your forehands get worse, even though you are using the quote-unquote Roger Federer technique. So I 
encourage you to use both types of forehands. Look at Diego. As he drops the racket down, he points the tip of the racket at the back fence with his strings closed. That basically just sets the racket, and then you can go to contact without any wrist movement, right? There's nothing really happening from his wrist from here to here. Yes, there is wrist movement, but it's not an active wrist movement that you're going to do on purpose. It's just our wrist is a hinge and it can move as you go through contact. But if you look at Federer, he has a big uh, pre-stretch of the forearm because the racket is on the outside of his hand and it has to lag back as his hand goes forward. So many players attempt this Roger Federer forehand and boy, can they do it, but their forehand gets worse. So it's important that you truly attempt both on your own and see what works best for you. I would recommend for most players that they use the Diego Schwartzman forehand uh, or that uh, Del Potro forehand or the Serena Williams forehand, where as the racket falls, the tip of the racket points to the back curtain just because it's so much easier. And yes, you can absolutely crush the ball. We all know that Del Potro can smack a forehand and he doesn't hit the same type of forehand that Federer does. The benefit of the Federer forehand is you can use an actually smaller swing and produce the same amount of racket speed. But just because because you're using that racket speed doesn't mean that you can control it or it helps you play your best. So again, buyer beware when you're using the Federer for him. But the small swing with Federer allows him with the with the pre-stretch to produce a tremendous amount of racket speed. Another thing you'll notice is Diego's leaning back a little bit. That is one thing that occurs with a semi-western typically a little more than an eastern. In eastern, you can typically lean in and get your palm to face forward, where with Diego he's very much leaning back, trying to get his palm to face up a little bit. So leaning back can actually help his palm to face up so his strings face forward over the net. And watch their follow-throughs. You'll look at Diego. Notice right here. This is a great view of it. These two frames. Notice with Diego, his racket is higher than his head. No, notice his racket is visible the whole time. It never, you know, goes out of the frame. But look at Federer. His racket actually follows through a little more across, and it's basically below head level. So if I explain it this way, Diego's racket is going above the yellow line, where Federer's racket is going below the yellow line. I am a big fan of the racket going above the yellow line, above your head from the back view. It just helps you get the spin you're looking for and the net clearance for depth. And then they follow through. So the lower turn is, is primarily how you'll see pre-stretch players use uh, their technique. They can actually use a smaller swing and still produce the racket speed, where the bigger swing with Diego is typically for the non-pre-stretch players. They both tilt their strings down, but this is more of that pat the dog look that you hear from Rick Macy, where the tip of the racket is pointing off to the right. Diego is basically setting the, the wrist position already where Federer still has to set the wrist from this point, and that late wrist set produces a ton of forearm pre-stretch that can really produce a lot of racket speed. And then again, the more across follow through with Federer and the more upward follow through with Diego. Now to help me demonstrate these four hands, I've got the Topspin Pro here. You know what to do. Check out my affiliate link in the description below. I'll even pin it in the first comment. It would mean the world to me if I've ever given you value here on YouTube whatsoever, if you were to use my affiliate link to get a Topspin Pro for at-home practice. So thank you so much. All right, the Fetter forehand. When Federer hits the forehand, his palm is facing forward as he's striking the ball because your palm facing forward is the eastern forehand grip. Your knuckle and heel pad are on the back panel, which is panel number three. Eastern forehand grip, awesome for crushing a ball. You can hit spin with it as well, but it, it really allows you to flatten that ball out beautifully. And a couple of weeks ago, I made a video on that exact thing. I'll, I'll pin that in the, in the um, or I'll put that in the description below, that video about different contact points and learning new grips on the forehand. So when Federer turns, he turns lower than Diego. So this is what I call two heads are better than one or two headed monster. His head and the racket head are very much similar heights. When he turns, his hand is slightly below shoulder level. And then from here, you see Federer straighten his arm. So when a lot of players drop the racket, they drop the racket down in the back. Federer is more pushing down, almost like you know, you're dunking someone in a pool, and, you know what I mean? Like you're pushing their head down underwater. And that's kind of the idea. It's this move. You see Federer's arm straighten. As it's going down and beginning to go down, he's pointing the tip of the racket off to the right. When the tip of the racket is pointing off to the right, and then as it's dropping, you turn, that creates a lag 
where your body rotates, it pulls the hitting arm forward, and you get this snap back with the racket. Now, a mistake that players often make when they're trying to mimic the Roger Federer forehand is they drop and then snap the racket back without the body rotation. Well, then you're not doing anything. You're just, you're tight and you're actively throwing the racket head back. You've got to be super loose, and as you drop, you rotate, and that throws the racket head back. When you do this, you've got to have your racket face closed at this point. That's vital so that your racket can be square against the back of the ball or even at just a few degrees close as you're hitting. And as you rotate, that will stretch the forearm so that when you uh, swing to the ball, the racket head can catch up a little bit. Kind of goes, you the racket lags and then catches up to the racket. You can get a ton of racket speed even with a smaller swing. Now with Federer, after he hit the ball, his racket hits and then he goes a little bit across, a little more across than I would recommend actually for most amateur players. Even my opinion, it's just my opinion, I've always felt that Roger Federer's forehand wasn't as consistent as I wish it was. Like I always watched him in tournaments or in Grand Slams and I just always felt like his forehand could fail him at, at, at important times. And if he swung up a little more, Yes, I'm actually saying that I think Roger Federer could have had a better forehand in his career. If he were to have swung up a little more and have a slightly longer contact point, who knows, maybe he wouldn't have framed as many balls or maybe he would have not missed as many shots. I, I truly believe that if he swung up a little more, he would have had an even better career. Yes, I'm sure I'm gonna get comments <laughs> below about that, about that statement. So when you're looking at the Diego Schwartzman forehand, his palm is facing up at 45 degrees with that same racket face. So here's the Eastern, here is the semi-Western. So when you hold on to the racket, you're holding on to panel four with the knuckle and the heel pad. So that's really great for higher balls. It's usually with kids, you'll see with the higher contact point with kids, they tend to go over to a, a semi-Western grip because it's just easier to get your strings to face forward with a higher contact when you're using a semi-Western. Now, Diego doesn't use that big pre-stretch, obviously, we just saw that. So he uses a slightly bigger swing to create that same amount of racket speed that he's looking for. So he turns a little higher, tip of the racket higher than his head. And I think, it does, and correct me if I'm wrong, you can write this in the comments, doesn't Diego use a slightly longer racket as well? Maybe it's like 27 and a half inches. But when he goes up high, then he drops down, but not with a straightening of the arm, but he drops down by dropping the racket head back, almost back toward the curtain. This is very much like you see Del Paltro do, you see Serena Williams do, and Del Paltro has a huge forehand. So don't think that the only way to have a big forehand is to use the Federer pre-stretch. It's absolutely not. They call him a Thor for a reason. He can absolutely just crush a forehand. Del Pocho's forehand is massive. And so when he drops the racket, the racket goes behind. And Diego points the tip of the racket at the, at the camera, at the back fence, as he drops, but he closes the racket the same. Now Diego is loose, and he is rotating his body at this point, so there is a little bit of lag but it's not the tremendous lag that you see with Federer because as he's dropping, he's setting the racket into position where Federer waits until he's very near the bottom to set. So there's a big quick lag and that gives you a bigger pre-stretch in the forearm. So as he drops the racket, he comes in, it's really a very similar wrist angle as he's going to the ball. You'll see with Diego, he's contacting with leaning back a little bit more. Again, that's just to get the palm to face up. Sometimes they, players will lean back a little bit just to have their palm face up so that their strings face forward. If you're hitting like full Western back, uh, full, full, uh, full Western forehands like this, you know, it doesn't really work. Typically with a full Western, which is your palm facing up when you hit the ball, you can see like how players will lean back as a way to get their palm to face up. So it's just understanding how the grips can can change our body position and our desired contact point as well and contact height. So when Diego hits the ball, you could see he swung up a little more and had the follow through be up a little higher. You see that with Nadal, he's got more of that fetter forehand uh, lag, but he also will finish up above his head. I'm a big fan of that. Just gives a little more height, a little more spin. It can give you more depth as well. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna demonstrate some Diego Schwartzman forehands. So I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna drop, and I'm gonna hit like this, right? So he's up here, he drops, tip of the racket at the back fence, and then I'm going up. With Federer, I'm gonna take the top panel off. That way I can swing a little flatter through the contact. So I turn, I'm gonna drop, and then you'll see my racket rotate, and then I'm going more across. And that's the Roger Federer forehand. So 
work on your forehand. Work on, first off, you gotta film yourself. Film yourself so you know what you're looking for. Don't think that the Roger Federer forehand is going to just automatically be the forehand for you. It isn't. You have to use what's best for you. Andre Agassi had an amazing forehand. He wasn't hitting forehands just like Roger Federer. And, and Djokovic and, and Del Paltrow, these players don't hit exactly like Roger Federer, but I think people put the lag forehand on a pedestal like it's the only way that you should be hitting forehands. Completely disagree. If you wanna know how to hit them, that's one thing. Test them out. In my experience, more players who use the, the Roger Federer lag you know, forehand, their forehand gets worse and they have to go back to that more conventional, you know, old school <laughs> forehand um, that actually allows you to play your best tennis. But film yourself, get yourself a Topspin Pro. My affiliate link is in the description below. If you wanna learn to use the type of swing that Federer uses, you can always take the top panel off and be able to drive through the contact a little bit more. So work on your forehand. Either use the lag or use the Diego Schwartzman one. Whichever one works for you, there's no doubt. You're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.